It seems like just yesterday, but it wasn't really, that people were having a really, really large time with the whole CERN collider going off. Y'all remember that? Where we thought there were opening portals to hell and all kinds of crazy things were happening across the globe where people were having these dances and these ritualistic looking things in the tunnels. And, and they were talking about that the, the whole thing going off was going to bring about portals and demons flying out from places and people. You remember all this? And if we do remember it, I, I, I wonder why people stopped talking about it. Like almost like the portals just decided to close back up or they were unsuccessful or CERN just went away. CERN is still here. In fact, CERN is still making all what they got to do. So they're still doing it, but something popped up in our head. Since nobody's talking about CERN, we decided to look in to see what CERN's doing now. Oddly enough, I'm not sure that I, I was even aware of this until I came across it. CERN and the U.S. signed joint statement of intent. Joint statement of intent between the U.S. and CERN concerns future planning for large research infrastructures, advanced scientific computing, and open science. Now, on the surface, that seems very good. You know, they're just trying to enhance the ways of mankind. However, if you remember correctly, back in 2022, there was a certain uh, act that was passed under the former president, the Chips and Science Act. Now, two years after the Chips and Science Act, Biden-Harris administration celebrates a historic uh, a achievements in bringing semiconductor supply chains home, creating jobs, supporting innovation, and protecting national security. Now, on the surface, that looks amazing, okay? Very amazing to bring all that stuff back. But what if the two are connected? What if the money that was supposed to be assigned to all these chips and infrastructure was actually going to facilitate more funding to get CERN fully up and running to create the exact same thing we were so worried about back in 2022? What if it's the same idea? What it is in order to actually fully get the portals that we thought were going to get open open. Let's read the article. CERN and U.S. government have released a joint statement concerning future planning for large research infrastructures, advanced scientific computing, and open science. The joint statement of intent was signed in Washington, D.C. in April by CERN Director General Fabiola Giannotti and the Principal U Deputy U.S. Uh, Chief Technologi Technology Officer Deirdre M Mulligan at the White House of Science and Technology. Acknowledging their long-standing partnership in nuclear and particle physics, CERN and the U.S. intend to enhance collaboration in planning uh, activities for large-scale resource-intensive uh, facilities with the goal of providing a sustainable and responsible pathway for the peaceful use of future accelerator technologies. Hydron Collider, remember that one. Uh, concerning the proposed future collider, uh, uh, circular collider, which would collide electrons and protons and positrons to produce copious quantities of Higgs bos bos bosons. Uh, the text states, should the CERN members, uh, sta CERN members state determine the FCCEE is likely to be CERN's next world-leading research faci facility, following the high-luminosity Large Hadron Collider, the United States intends to collaborate on its construction and physics exploitation, subject to appropriate domestic approvals. The technical, the technical and um, financial feasibility study for the proposed FCC is due to be completed in March of 2025. That was a few months back. CERN and the U.S. also intend to discuss potential collaboration on pilot project to innovate, to incorporate new analytics techniques and such as tools as AI, because remember that was a very big conversation just at the end of the last administration, into particle physics research at scale and affirm their collective mission to take swift strategic action that leads to accelerating widespread adoption of equitable open research, science, and scholarship throughout the world. In December 2023, the High Energy Physics Advisory Panel to the U.S. Department of Energy and National Science Foundation released a 10-year strategic plan for U.S. particle physics. Meanwhile, the next update of the European Strategy for Particle Physics, which is formed through a board consultation of the particle physics community in Europe and beyond, is about to get underway. CERN Council has set the deadline for submitting written um, input for the next strategy update at March 31st, 2025, with a view of concluding the process, uh, concluding the process in June of 2026. The final report 
of the FCC feasibility study will be key component of that input. Now, many might say this is a stretch, far too far too far of a stretch to even remotely reach reality. However, we also thought the same thing about the CERN Collider to begin with. Yet and still, while it was happening, all the concerns, in fact, there were 24-hour um, almost uh, verification of it taking place. We had people bringing up CERN's website to take, I mean, Savage Patriots, too strong, we did it, we covered it extensively, where we were watching to see what exactly was happening. And the, the going theory at that time was that it could be a very dangerous thing trying to do what they were doing. Many thought at the time that what they were actually doing was messing with something on more of a spiritual level than they had known of. They thought they were doing and tapping into something that was just, you know, human interaction and human innovation. But really what they were doing was messing with something very, very, very crazy. The question is, is this something that was actually going to happen? Were they actually opening up portals? Companies have acknowledged 395 billion in investments in semiconductors and electronics and the creation of over 15,000, 115,000 jobs uh, since they took office. Again, they, 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 they signed the law into existence in 2022. Dozens of companies have committed nearly 400 billion in total of semiconductor investments across the country. Now, if those investments are even halfway sent to CERN, we are looking at something very, very crucial to think about. This could very well be the final nail that they need to get CERN over that finish line. Now, the question is, will it continue? Are these endorsements of a future type or have they already gotten the money? Is the money pre-committed? Can the money be pulled back? What exactly is taking place and why has everyone just stopped talking about the Hadron Collider? Why has that gone dormant? Why is nobody mentioning anything about what they thought about was going to happen when it did get kicked off? It's not like they don't run projects every day. I think it's like every six months that they run projects all the time there. So why have we stopped talking about it? Just maybe that all the issues that we've been having, they are the ones running experiments at the you know, financialing of the U.S. government. Possibly. Not saying it's true. Just saying we might be the financiers of opening portals across the globe that might lead to hell. I'm just saying if that's the case, <laughs> we might be in some trouble. You think that's going to happen? Are we? Have we lost that theory of what CERN was going to be about? Is that now a thing of the past? Are they still trying to do it? Did you believe that that was possible? If you did believe it was possible, what stopped it from being possible anymore? And does the U.S. government have a hand in making sure that it is financed through them? And if that's the case, are they the ones that are going to be eventually behind it? Whatever your thoughts are, I would love to hear you on this one because there was a lot of buzz about it. And I'm sure most of us are still thinking about it. So please leave your comments below and let's kick off this on the right foot. Training athletes, build leaders, changing communities. At Mentors for Life, sponsored by the Bully Me Bad Project, we provide free professional sports training and mentorship to youth with passion, drive, and the desire to grow. We connect them with top-tier coaching and leadership tools that unlock their full potential. Our athletes train with elite professionals like Coach Cedric Booty of CM3, who's worked with NBA players such as Jaden Ivey and Blake Wesley, and the dynamic team of Tevin Lake and Bobo from T2 Sports Performance. Together, they've trained standout athletes including Notre Dame football stars, NFL offensive lineman Danny Piner, and Kyron Williams. In a school or neighborhood of 1,000 youth, five redirected lives can mean five future leaders, five families spared heartbreak, and five powerful stories of hope. And this is backed by research from the Money Smart Athlete Foundation, which shows that athletes have a powerful influence on youth behavior, confidence, and long-term success. We don't just build athletes, we build mentors. High school students who complete our program will become certified Mentors for Life members and will be paid to speak, lead, and coach the next generation. To support Mentors for Life, all you have to do is click here if you're on a mobile device, or click here if you're on a computer to donate or learn more. Or you can reach us directly at mentorsforlife574 at gmail.com. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mentors for Life. Donate today 
and help save our youth.